Kinder, 52 years old, was in stage 5 chronic kidney disease. He was suffering from serious, painful symptoms of uremia. He decided that he didn't want to undergo dialysis, but his kidney function was too low. Every day without dialysis was a huge risk for him. Then, a miracle happened. He took just one natural remedy and in two weeks his creatinine was reduced by more than 30 percent he was then able to avoid dialysis for more than two years without any of the symptoms he was facing Catherine here i've been working with kidney disease patients for 10 years now and a story like that of peter a 52 year old stage 5 cgd patient who avoided dialysis for years is not something you hear about every day okay guys what you need to know about the story of peter is that he is not one of my subscribers i've actually learned about how peter avoided dialysis from medical literature Yes, the story I will be showing you today is an actual case study that was published in a research article. What this means is that all the medications used, treatment he received and his blood tests and levels are all verified, documented and peer reviewed. No room for errors here. So question, how was Peter able to avoid dialysis for more than two years? in stage 5 of CKD. He received a form of intestinal dialysis, which is a medical term to describe a certain type of remedy used to remove uremic toxins through the intestines instead of the kidneys. What he received is actually a natural remedy that many patients are using today to lower their creatinine levels. This is an incredibly powerful natural fiber that once in the intestines binds to cholesterol, excess sugar, excess toxins and helps the body excrete all these toxins through the feces protecting the kidneys. And what makes Peter case study particularly significant for us is the incredible result he obtained from this natural remedy. When he was enrolled in the study, Peter creatinine was 3.1 as we can see here. Peter suffers from FSGS, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, which is a very serious disease of the filters in the kidneys. This is a disease which is still considered incurable and that was causing him serious symptoms. He had fluid accumulation, nausea, itching, and shortness of breath. This is why his doctor recommended him to start dialysis. But after being administered this natural remedy for just two weeks, his symptoms began to get less severe. In fact, after just two weeks, his creatinine level went from 3.1 to 2.1, which is incredible. During this time, he was also administered one alpha-calcidol, a vitamin D analog made for people with kidney problems and was put on a low-protein diet. He was told to completely avoid any meat, poultry, fish, milk, cheese, and yogurt. This diet, according to the researchers, made a very significant part in the incredible result Peter achieved. More about this later in this video. Now the incredible part. Despite FSGS being an incurable form of kidney disease, Peter continued to see his kidney function improve during the two years of the study. After around four months, his creatinine went from 3.1 to just 0.9. Guys, this is the same creatinine level someone with perfectly working kidneys would have. During the two years of the study, he continued to experience low urea levels and didn't develop any symptoms of uremia. So he didn't have to deal with very debilitating symptoms such as nausea, itching, and shortness of breath. Now the question is, can you use a form of intestinal dialysis to improve your kidney function? Yes, there are several natural remedies that can help you achieve exactly what Peter was able to achieve. And obviously, if you are not in stage 5, it will be a lot easier for you to get the benefits and to protect the remaining functionality of your kidneys. Now the best part, taking the correct 
form of intestinal dialysis when in stage 3 or 4 of kidney disease also means protecting the kidneys. This is why some doctors are starting to prescribe medicines that work just like the remedy Peter took to their patients in stage 3 or 4. So what I want to do today is showing you what the most common forms of intestinal dialysis are. This is gonna be interesting because this is AS120, also known as Cremazine. This is similar to what Peter took, but it's in a form specifically made for patients in stage 3 or 4 of kidney disease. AST120 is a medication approved in Japan and other countries to fight CKD. It is actually an evolutionary step forward from other forms of intestinal dialysis because it's lab made to only bind to uremic toxins. And this means that patients only have to take 3 to 6 grams of it per day for it to work. So the question is, can we actually use AST120 to avoid dialysis? AST120 is conferred by several studies to be extremely effective in protecting renal function. In particular, a large review of studies published very recently states that the serum creatinine slope was significantly lessened in patients treated with tailored dose as 120. Taking this medication means delaying dialysis for years even in patients in the advanced stages. But there's still a controversy regarding this medication. While some countries have been using it for decades to delay dialysis for years in patients treated with it, other countries are still adapting its effectiveness which means that you will only be able to get the prescription for it if you live in Japan, Korea, or in the Philippines. Now, AST120 is actually a form of activated charcoal. The interesting part is that people are already using activated charcoal as a remedy. Activated charcoal is a popular detoxifier and home remedy. People use it every day in small dosages as a home remedy against bloating, gas, diarrhea, and also to get their teeth whiter. And it's very similar to what Peter was prescribed to avoid dialysis in stage 5. All this is possible because activated charcoal is extremely good at binding to toxins in the digestive system and removing them. Especially uremic toxins, the waste products kidneys cannot remove. Inactivated charcoal was also used in stage 5 kidney disease patients who wanted to avoid dialysis. In the study, patients with kidney disease stage 5 were administered 30 grams of activated charcoal per day, which is frankly a lot. But the treatment was so effective that all of them had a significant decrease in blood urea and creatinine levels. However, researchers thought that this remedy worked a little bit too much. The problem with activated charcoal is that it binds to and removes everything it comes in contact with, vitamins and essential nutrients included. Now, this is why what they used to help Peter, 52 year old, with FSGS to get better is a different remedy. What they use is acacia fiber. Okay guys, this is how acacia fiber looks like in powder form. Acacia fiber is the gum that's naturally exuded by the acacia tree. It's a 100% vegetable and natural non-genetically modified remedy which is often used as a food additive. When taken orally in therapeutic dosages, other than being a form of intestinal dialysis, acacia fiber is also used to help with diabetes, high cholesterol, weight loss, and high blood pressure, all according to several studies. And this makes it useful for patients in all the stages of CKD. Acacia fiber was actually used in several stage 5 patients who wanted to avoid dialysis, not just our case study, Peter. All of the test subjects were able to avoid dialysis thanks to this natural remedy for up to 8 years. If you want to try it, I have a link down in the description to a very trustworthy supplement that was made specifically to help people with kidney disease. Question: How much acacia fiber to avoid dialysis? The therapeutic dose for this remedy varies according to the result you want to achieve. For example, for diabetes, around 20 grams a day of acacia fiber seem to be the best dose. 
Doses around 15 grams were used to control cholesterol levels and for weight loss. In patients wanting to avoid dialysis, the dosage used is even higher, but I always recommend to consult a nephrologist and have them help you finding the perfect dose for you. Never self-prescribe a remedy like this. Now a very important question. Is acacia fiber always going to slow down kidney disease? It's very important to notice that the patients in this study were also being treated with all the medications appropriated for their stage of kidney disease. Almost all of them needed to be treated for high blood pressure, some also for diabetes, anemia and vitamin deficiencies. And there's also another step that was proven necessary to achieve the incredible result of avoiding dialysis. All the patients in the studies I've mentioned were following a low or very low protein diet. This is a crucial step to avoid dialysis. I'll be very clear on this. If you want to lower your creatinine levels, if you want your kidneys to be protected, the first thing you should do is limiting your protein intake. If you want to know more about this life-saving diet, my video up here might help you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching.